Today I'm gonna to show you guys how I use the new generative fill tool in Photoshop beta to extend my images and do a couple of other things as well. If you don't know what this new generative tool is, you can think of it as a new AI plugin that was added to Photoshop beta that allows you to use AI to either add things into your images or basically extend them as well, which is what I'm doing in today's video. It's important to note that this is only available in Photoshop beta and you will need to be connected to the internet to use the generative tool. Before I continue, I do want you to know that this video is sponsored by Adorama. Adorama is an industry leading retailer that has been serving photography, videography, and audio customers for almost 50 years. Their motto is everyone is a creator and they do their best to unleash that creator within us all by providing us with the tools and expertise necessary to get the job done right. I personally shop at Adorama for both the great deals on products I use and recommend, plus the great customer service on those products as well. If you find yourself interested in any of the products that I talk about in today's video, definitely check out the links in the description area below for links to those products and be sure to use those links if you decide to order. On the screen right now is a photo that I took a couple years ago in 2020 and I actually took this shot, really liked it, and then took a behind the scenes, which I'll show you guys on the screen right now to show you guys exactly how I lit it. But in that behind the scenes, you can actually see the light on the right side actually died. So immediately after I took that behind the scenes, I didn't take another shot because I really wanted that secondary light to be in the photo as well. One thing I do regret after taking this shot was not taking a landscape photo first because it was such a nice sunset that I wanted to capture it. So hopefully today with this new generative tool in Photoshop, I can create a new version of this photo, a landscape version of this shot. One thing that I'm gonna be using a lot is this toolbar right here. If you don't see it, you wanna go to the window and go to contextualize taskbar, enable that, and then the taskbar will show up on here on the top. I actually do have it pinned in that spot and you can pin it using this section right here, this little menu. The first thing that I'm gonna do is get the crop tool, which is gonna be C on the keyboard. And let's say for example, that I want to upload this landscape shot into Instagram, which is gonna be crop of four by five or five by four. In this case, it will be five by four. So now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out just a little bit and I'm gonna hold down shift Alt, which I think might be Control Alt on uh, iMac or something else. I'll go ahead and throw the shortcut on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and hold those two things and extend the image and probably keep it right here, hit enter. And now I'm gonna zoom in all the way again. And now I'm gonna get the marquee tool and I'm gonna go ahead and select just the image here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control Shift I or Command Shift I. And that's gonna go ahead and invert the selection so that you're only selecting these blank areas here on the left and the right. I am actually gonna add just a tiny bit more of the image on the left side and on the right side because I've experienced a couple of different things that were going wrong and I'll show you guys in a second. So that's why I'm actually gonna extend the selection into a little bit more than necessary on the image. Usually when I've seen people use this tool, this new generative fill tool in Photoshop, they were only selecting the blank area, but I'm gonna add a little bit more for a reason. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on generative fill and I'm not gonna mess with the different prompts. I'm just gonna go ahead and just click generate because I'm just gonna do a simple thing of extending the image. And here on the screen is the result of that new generative fill tool. It looks incredible. It's insane how it gets the reflections right over here and it does a good job of just basically going beyond the image. It's uncropping this image. I really like how nice and soft the glow is in the sky. So that was a great job there. But every time that you do the generative fill tool, it creates a generative layer that actually has three different variations. So that's gonna be over here hiding on the side. It's gonna be over here where it says variations. I'm gonna extend it and then I'm gonna scroll down. And now you can see the other two selections and two variations actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the second variation so you can see exactly how that's gonna look like. And this actually looks really good too. I think I like this one a little bit better. And now I'm gonna go ahead and show the third variation and see how that one looks like. And I actually think I like this one. I was gonna say I like it the best, but now that I take a closer look, I think I don't like this big blob of a cloud. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it to the second one and probably leave it like this. But like I mentioned before, I did select a little bit more of the image than usually people do. So the reason for that is because if you actually take a look over here, it's very faint, but you might see like a dark line going down the image right here. And my best guess for why that line shows up is because I have the vignetting. I don't take off the vignetting on my Sigma Art 105 1.4 and my Sigma Art 35 1.2. And that kind of creates a kind of a darker edge of the photo. And I think Generated Fill doesn't play around nicely with that. And it creates like a dark line. But you know what, my guess is as good as yours. This tool has just came out a couple days ago. But the reason for me adding more of that image when I do the generative tool is because then I can mask out that line 
and then it can become a clear image. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and select the mask and then I'm gonna paint black over that line so that it goes away. And now I finally have a completed image, a completed landscape, Instagram crop version of the shot. But I wanna take this photo a step further and let's say that we wanted to get rid of the Instagram crop. We didn't care for the Instagram crop. And then I just wanted to go ahead and just keep it, you know, clear the ratio actually. Zoom out a little bit and let's get a little bit wider. Let's say I wanted this to be a banner of some sort, a very, very wide shot compared to the original. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing as I did before. I'm gonna go ahead and let this load. Using the marquee tool, I'm gonna go ahead and select a little bit extra of the image, you know, this little section over here. I'm gonna hit Control Shift I or Command Shift I. And now I do have the empty spots plus a little bit of the image, like I said before. I'm gonna hit Generate to Fill again, then Generate and see what happens and it actually looks freaking awesome. I, you know, I'm trying to really not fake this enthusiasm. I was actually really, really excited about this tool. And this was the first time I'm seeing this, you know, this generative layer, but I honestly don't know what else to say other than it's freaking crazy incredible. I'm not sure how you guys feel about it. You know what, let me know in the comment section below how you feel about this new tool. I think it's great. What I was primarily using this a couple hours ago when I was really, you know, learning about this tool is I was removing very big distractions from my images that were previously very, very hard for me to remove. That took me more than an hour to remove from my photos. And this new tool was able to do it in seconds. So I'm very excited to, you know, to use this tool for those different things. But like I said before, that line shows up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get the mask tool and take out that line. And then I'll have a finally completed image. But I will show you guys how I remove distractions with this tool after I show you the completed version of this image. And now I basically have a way, way, way bigger, wider shot version that I initially wanted to grab of this photo. So, I mean, again, I'm freaking excited with this tool, but let me go ahead and show you guys how this tool works with the distractions. And also let me extend one more image before I show you how to remove distractions using this tool. So here's another photo I took. This was beginning of April, like a month and a half ago. I wanted to use this image because I thought it would be a good challenge for the generative fill tool to kind of extend and, you know, extend the image and uncrop it basically. So let's go ahead and just do the same thing. Get the crop tool, extend the side of the image, the other side of the image as well. I'm gonna hit enter. And now I'm gonna go ahead and select a little bit, you know, a little bit of the image. Hit control shift I, command shift I. And then again, generate a fill, then generate. So here are the results from that generative layer. I think it looks pretty good at first glance, but on second glance, I don't like this thing over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the second variation. And I think this one works better on both sides. Looks a little funky right here specifically, but let's go ahead and see the third variation. And this one, I'm actually happy with. So I'll probably keep it like this. Here on the screen is the last photo that I wanted to go ahead and show you guys because I wanted to remove this big old eyesore of a sign using the generative fill tool. And it actually took me long than an hour to remove it when I was editing this photo originally. So let's see how fast the generated fill tool does compared to how I did. I'm gonna go ahead and get the lasso tool now, not the marquee tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and just select this area right here of the sign that I want to remove, then generated fill, then generate. And here is the result. It looks like it made a house out of maybe different things, different textures over here. Let's go ahead and see the second variation. I actually find with this one, maybe that tree is a little bit distracting. Let's see the third variation. And I think this one looks okay, but I would be happy with this one and maybe fixing this tree here. And actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and just zoom in a little bit. And now I can use the lasso tool again and let's see how I can move that tree that I don't like. And again, generate fill, generate. This is the first variation. Let's see the second variation and then the third variation. And I probably would go ahead and just, you know, fine tune this image, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on this image. Let me just show you guys how I would remove the softbox using the same thing, the generative tool. I'm gonna select all this section here and then again, do the exact same thing. And I'm actually happy with that result. So let's move on to the hair, which I think took me a while too, because I was having to sample some of the tree behind her, the different bokeh that was behind her. So let's go ahead and just sample all of that hair right as close as we can to where I want to remove it. And then same thing, generate a fill, generate. And this actually looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just continue from here. Cause again, I don't wanna spend too much time. The last thing I probably would do is remove this hair from the neck. I'm very curious to see how this works because it was very hard for me to make it look realistic when I removed that hair with the first edit that I did. 
let's go ahead and just back out and yeah to show you guys how i would move this and again less than a minute i think if this is the before and then this is the after and again that thing that sign took me like longer than an hour to take out and that's pretty much it for this video i'm really excited about this tool and what it can do not for like the more creative things but more for the time consuming things that will no longer be time consuming you know more efficient workflows for me but um how are you guys feeling about the ai in general let me know in the comment section below but for now i just want to give one last thanks to adorama for sponsoring this video it really means a lot for them to do that because it allows me to dedicate time to make these videos for you guys so definitely check them out take care guys and i'll see you in the very next video